Happy Monday, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the week. This is Derek the Nitwit. Welcome to my video and thanks for all the people just dropping in and welcome back to all my um, subscribers. So, I have Happy Mail and AMA. I got my package from Sydney Bolter. Melter? I still can't pronounce it. I flip it around, but it's got the addresses and I'm not doxing anyone. So, and I also, let's see. I got this absolutely cute spoon that goes in a little coffee spoon. Stir it. And it hooks so you don't lose it. And so you can not stab yourself in the eye with it. Because those little pointy ears, you can do some damage. Okay, and my cup. Got it at Walmart. I know a lot of people seem to like my cup. I like my cup. So, got that. I got more eBay yarn. I mean, it, it's just, it's acrylic yarn, but it's super soft. It's softer than the most acrylic yarns that I found in um, like my local stores. Unless I want to go like high end. I paid like maybe a quarter, like 25 cents for that. And I also got ponytail holders. A lot of them, and they're the nice ones without the metal band to pull your hair and yeah I know it's not gonna work on me I have plenty of friends that have hair that I can almost put it in my my beard used to be longer I trimmed it now I'm growing it out now yeah I can almost do it my stepdad had long enough hair he could beard he could braid it whatnot I'm jealous so Anyway, I got that because Llama Mama Kayla has a tutorial on how to crochet scrunchies. And so, um, I'm going to do that. And I'll post the link to her tutorial down in the description below. So, that's my acquisitions for today. So, now on to the AMA questions. So, the first one comes from Cindy Bolter. She asks, how long have I been knitting and crocheting? I started loom knitting... 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. Um, I started with the flat, you know, the flat loomed where you make scarves and, you know, flat panels. And then got, excuse me, um, went to a, you know, learned the round looms and then eventually the infinity loom, which I have never actually, no, I have finished a project on the infinity loom. I, maybe. That I have. I may have frogged it, who knows. So, um, that. Now, as far as knitting, I learned to do just a basic knit stitch on knitting from YouTube tutorials, and I did learn that, um, looking at my notes here, summer of 2018, but that was all I could do, and if I dropped a stitch, I didn't know how to pick it back up, so if I dropped a stitch, it was frog the whole thing. So, basically, I just got a lot of practice with knit stitch, I got down with, got pretty good with that, and I did in take a course at Evotech the um, spring of 2019 and it was you meet once a week for two hours and for six weeks and we learned you know the knit stitch purling which I, I mean I'd heard the word I had no clue what it was how to read a pattern and how to pick up a drop stitch how to tink how to frog how to you know take pull the whole needle out rip out inches and inches and go back and fix it how to I mean, so many things. The best thing I learned in there was how to fix my mistakes so that I didn't have to watch it a little miss. So I didn't have to frog everything. Um, she's being nice now. We're, we're hopefully done with Demon Kitty. Um, so that was in uh, spring of, two, what did I say, 2019. And I... I only learned crochet summer of 2019, so I haven't even been crocheting a year. I had a friend, Drew, he was in my unboxing video from, um, Bag of, Crystal at Bag of Day, um, crochet, and he taught me, you know, the basics of crocheting, you know, single crochet, half double, double crochet, um, helped me out a little bit, you know, when I get, um, confused with stuff. And then I t did take a, an intro to crochet course at Joann's, and I've gone back and taken another crochet course, and the, um, 
of course, the instructor, you know, she keeps telling me I need to contact her before signing up for class. But sometimes the, the whole group aspect of it is a lot of what I'm interested in. So, and now Craving Crochet asked, what month was I born in? No, this is when you're going to feel bad for my mom. My mom always told me that I was due the tail end of October. Like, I should have been a Halloween baby. I was born December 2nd. So, yeah, my mom was more than a month overdue. She was more than two weeks late before she finally went into labor with me. And then she'd go to, she used to tell me that she went to the hospital almost every day. And they said, okay, you know, you're going to have a baby today. And then they'd send her back home. And eventually, she labor continued long enough that she dilated up. They were able to use forceps and yank me out because I did not want to come out. I was happy. And my poor mom, they thought I was going to be a twin because she got huge because I didn't curl up in the fetal position. I did this thing the whole time. Which also meant, because of the position I was in, my ankles didn't quite form right. I am. Um, so, when I first started standing, like when I was a baby, and you hold me, the weight of my toes would make my feet flop around backwards. So, I tell people my feet were born on backwards. Or I was born with my feet on backwards. But it was just my ankles were just super way too flexible and would flip around. So, when I first started standing, they had these old-fashioned baby boot, baby shoes, you know, the leather ones with the hard sole, and they had a bar going between them to keep my feet pointed forward. And, of course, they started doing that when I started standing, which, you know, that's when the kids want to try and really be mobile. So, my mom used to tell me I used to, would stand up and grab a hold of the dog and let the dog pull me around. So. And, no, I haven't forgot about opening Cindy's package. It's over here staring at me. We'll get to that at the end of the video. Um, See, Bridget Queen's Crochet and Knits asked me, out of knitting, looming, or crocheting, which is my favorite? My favorite changes all the time. Right now, my favorite is crocheting because my thumb hurts because when I purl and I'm moving, I tend to push the needle with my thumb, like when I'm scooting it down, you know, on the, you know, or I'm moving the, the loops on the needle. So my thumb, I don't know if you can see, eh, it's not going to. There you go. It's kind of tore up. So, right now, crochet is my favorite. But, that depends on the, and also on the project. You know, like, I'm, um, I don't like, you know, I went for a while where I wouldn't knit because of the, the crochet hat, or the Christmas hat from Hell. But then I had my little blanket that I was showing you, the Burnett blanket. I love knitting that. Because I'm so close to it being done, and I, I can't wait for it to be done. But, yeah. Loom knitting is more of a, one of my fallbacks for, like, specific projects, like my, the cowl that I make for my friend, my sister's friend, um, that's done on a loom, and sometimes if I just need to really zone out and not have to count anything, I go back to loom knitting, because that, I'll, what I, I'll, I know that there are so many more stitches that I want to learn on loom knitting, but right now what I use it for is just, you know, like, mindless kind of meditation type stuff. Let's see. Quilty Crocheter asks if I have a Doctor Who collection. I don't have the space for much collections. I have my yarn, which you can see the top of the stack there. And then I have stuff for the cats. I mean, you know, my cats are spoiled, as all cats should be. But I, I live in my, my no-bedroom apartment. You see 99% of my apartment in this video. I mean, there's the kitchen, and I have a dining room and a bathroom you can't see. And that's the rest of the house. One of these days, I'll give I'll give you a, an apartment tour. It'll take about five seconds. Um, I do collect novelty socks and novelty t-shirts. Like I've got my Hogwarts on today, um, and I I mo I used to have several Doctor Who t-shirts and socks. They've worn out. I've got one Doctor Who shirt now. Let's see. Let's see. I love this shirt. Yeah, that's my closet. Um, so, yeah. But, I do have, I believe I have a pair of socks that have um, Daleks on it. But, it, uh, most of my collection, 
a couple years ago when I moved, I lost almost everything I owned just because I didn't have anywhere to store it. And so I lost, um, you know, like 90% of everything I own. So I'm just building up again. Madonna Ballard, she was quite curious. All the rest of my questions come from her. So let's see, what is my favorite drink? And well, if we're talking about adult beverages, margarita. Just plain margarita. Um, I like frozen margaritas too, but, you know. You're going to Mexico, or Cozumel. Everywhere you go, they are always offering free shots of tequila. So yeah, I, I will get my fill of tequila in the next, you know, 10 days. So. Otherwise, my favorite drinks would be Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Orange Soda, and Diet Grape Soda. And yeah, I know the controversy with diet sodas, um, but diet soda is going to be better for me than the calories from, you know, full sugar sodas. My only thing with Diet Grape is it's impossible to find in Oklahoma. There's a brand, was that Fago? F-A-Y-G-O. They're the only ones i found that has diet grape soda. And no one sells it in Oklahoma. Or Oklahoma City in the area that I'm in. I, you know, Amazon would sell it, but it's prohibitively expensive. I mean, like, you have to buy a mass amount at once, and it's way overpriced. I mean, you know, for a bottle of soda that would cost, you know, when you break it, you know, that break it down by bottle, you know, it normally would cost like a dollar in the store, maybe a dollar fifty in the store, and it would be like three or four dollars per bottle with what Amazon sells. So if anyone lives anywhere where they actually have diet soda, diet grape soda, let me know. Let's see, what website do I visit most often? YouTube, of course. It runs pretty much 24-7. And during the day when I'm awake, I have YouTube videos running on the TV. At night, I listen to creepy Reddit stories. Um, on my phone and doesn't give me nightmares and it's interesting enough to keep me in bed when I wake up because otherwise I'll if I wake up and I'm awake longer than two seconds if I don't have something to listen to I will get on my phone and check my email and play a game and the next thing I know I've been awake for three hours and that's not good I fight sleep, so I've got to have something to keep me amused. I also use Google, making sure my mini didn't wake up on that. Um, I love my Google Home Mini. I go to Amazon and eBay a lot. Um, my cat food is like you know, I get that from eat from Amazon because it's the same stuff I buy at Walmart. It's just they will actually deliver it to me, and I don't have to carry it on a bus. And of course, eBay, you can find all kinds of stuff for cheap. Let's see, what kind of art do I enjoy most? I don't know that I have a particular style. It's not like I'm into Impressionist or, um, not Dot Matrix. What are those little point people? Um, anyway, it's not so much the genre. I mean, it's like the theme. I like dark humor. I like apocalyptic scenes. Um, you know, I like... I mean, I worked as a nurse and as a prison guard. In both careers, you have to have, you know, you, you tend to develop dark humor. So, um, you know, zombie humor is fun, funny, and no one ever watched The Walking Dead. I started it several times and just couldn't get past the first season. Just because I found other stuff to do, not that it was bad. Um, I did like Shaun of the Dead. That was hilarious. So was Donna. Donna did what hilarious, but it was good. But, um, anything, things that catch my eye. Now, magic, speaking of catching my eye, magic eye puzzles, those little dots that you just have to stare at. Once I figured out how to see them, I love them. Um, and the neat thing on them also is actually they're used in eye therapy. You know, if you're, when you're working on a computer or something and you get eye strain, and you're supposed to, like, every hour, you're supposed to take a, a couple minute break or, you know, whatnot to rest your eyes. They suggest magic eye puzzles, and that's actually where it was originally developed was for working with eye strain. So, but I love them. I got my stepdad a magic eye puzzle one time and told him if he didn't, if it went an entire year and he, and he didn't finish it, I got it. And I think before the year was up, my nephew claimed it. But yeah. My favorite genre of book or movie? I tend to hang out in the young adult section um, of books. I don't really like reading about sex scenes um, or the romance. You know, some kind of romance, like mild romance is fine. 
I'm not a prude. I'm, I'm very much the opposite of a prude. I just don't want to read about sex all the time. And I'm kind of getting frustrated that, watch it, Little Miss. Um, Little Miss is on our obstacle course. Um, young adult books are starting to get more sex scenes, and that just irritates me. And, and it doesn't irritate me because I think kids shouldn't be reading about it because I fully support sex education for kids with, you know, no shame involved. I just don't want to read about it. But I do like, you know, disaster movies, um, action movies, disaster, dystopian type stuff. Um, if it has to do with a plane crash or, you know, tornadoes and hurricanes and floods and uh, stuff like that, I love. Um, I'm not sure why, but the funny story, right before I flew on a plane for the very first time, I watched Executive Decision. And, which, I still like that movie. That's the whole, you know, planes get hijacked, whatnot thing, with some nerve gas bomb on it. Um, and then I get to the airport to catch the flight, and they're, you know, had the little kiosk running the news on it, and they're showing, it was a plane crash for the same airline I was about to get on. So, plane was fine. I wasn't expecting, my, my first plane ride was on a turboprop plane. Mm -hmm. I'd pick my sister, uh, you know, gone my, my family would pick up my sister from the airport plenty of times. So, you know, I knew people come out of the jetway. You know, I've seen TV. Dude, they call for our flight. They have us lined up. They take us through the doors, down the steps, across the tarmac. We had to walk out to our plane across the tarmac. It was that small of a plane. Two steps, and then you're inside the plane. But, you know, it was fine. And for the longest time, I wouldn't fly anything bigger than a turboprop because I was just, I was comfortable with those. Anyway. Now, let's see. Next one. Next question from Madonna. What is special about the place I grew up? Well, one year our high school had the highest pregnancy rate in the state. Other than that, not an awful lot. I mean, it's a small town. It's what they refer to as a bedroom community. We weren't that, we're, Choctaw isn't that far from Tinker Air Force Base. A lot of people worked at Tinker. Choctaw has grown a lot since, you know, I've left. Um, so, you know, it's getting bigger, but I don't know that there's anything really special other than, um, you know, kids being kids. Let's see. What is one thing you really want but can't afford? A car or a shelving unit? And out of the two, I'd rather have the shelving unit. I need storage space. And I really couldn't afford the upkeep and the gas and the insurance went on a car anyway. So, And public transportation is great out here. Who is my go-to band or artist when I can't decide on something to listen to? I have a rather schizophrenic taste in music. I have, it's, I like songs more than I like genres. I have a playlist on YouTube music that I play, and when I get up in the morning, like when I'm just, you know, cleaning the litter box and feeding the cats and sweeping up and taking a shower and whatnot, I have my playlist playing. And it has got everything from country to pop to rock to weird owl to rap, you know, just whatever. Now, if I am really pissed off or really upset and I need to just kind of change my mood because I just don't want to be like that, my magic song is a We Didn't Start the Fire. That song, if I am angry, I will play it as loud as I can and I will scream along with it. If I'm sad, I'll play it at a normal speed and or normal volume and just sing along with it. If I'm happy, it just kind of pumps me up, whatnot. And that's just, it fixes a lot of stuff for me. Let's see. And the last song, last question for today, because this is getting to be a long video and I still haven't even opened my um, package from Cindy. What makes a good life? Being nice and staying out of other people's business? I mean, my whole theory is if it doesn't hurt you, let it be. You know, one person's rights only extend so far. Your rights can't infringe on someone else's rights. You know, and their rights can't infringe on yours. But you also have to remember, your personal opinions aren't necessarily rights. So, sorry for the soapbox. I am I am part of the LGBT community. Um, I have a lot of friends that are obviously part of the LGBT community. You know, I see the, you know, I don't like the racism that, you know, is in the country or not. So yeah, this ten equality tends to be like my soapbox issue. So anyway, we will get to more AMA answer videos later. We'll answer more questions because there's a lot, y'all, y'all put questions out. 
and um, so I definitely I'm gonna make sure we answer all of them. So let's get into my package. And it's gonna be noisy because I haven't opened it yet. Ha. Okay. Here is the green yarn, worsted weight, Hirschner's yarn. And this is 100% acrylic. And it is, use a um, size 7 needle or a size I hook. Size 4 medium weight. And it's a very pretty green, almost like a Kelly green, but a, just a little bit darker than a Kelly green. They refer to it as emerald green. I don't know that I would say it's dark enough to be emerald. Maybe Wizard of Oz emerald. It's a pretty color. And then we have this one, which is True Gold. Kind of a brownish mustardy color. I like it. I think these two go well together. And then we have this one, which is chocolate. Very pretty. And actually, all three of them go well together. I'm going to have to find a project that's big enough to use all three of those colors to get to show in that. And then I'll definitely have to show that project when I'm done with it. Now let's see, it is, does it say, 180 yards times six. Hey Google, what's 180 times six? The answer is 1,080. That seems like that should be times 10, but whatever. I never said I was good at math. I love my Google Home. So if anyone has an idea of the project that uses about 1,080 yards or a little less, let me know. Um, it could be knitting or crocheting. Um, so. so anyway, that is the video for today. And thanks for sticking along with me for this long. And definitely check in tomorrow. I'll answer more questions. Have a great day.